Welcome to this Avanti video where we're going to run through the Event Viewer for the application control component in the Security Controls product. During this video we're going to look at how to select the events you want capturing on the endpoints, how to schedule daily maintenance of the events to avoid the database getting overloaded, how to run a query to retrieve events, how to customise the query, how to add a filter to that query, and finally, how to create a rule item from the event viewer. We'll start by looking at how to select events to capture. In the Security Controls console, open an application control configuration. Navigate to Configuration Settings, Events. From here, you can determine whether the events are to be captured centrally or locally. I want to capture the data centrally, so I'll go ahead and select On. Just to note, if you select to capture events centrally, then we recommend you schedule a daily maintenance job. This will prevent the database from getting overloaded. We'll cover how to do this a little later in the video. Now to select which events we want to capture. From the navigation panel, select the events selection node. Here you see a list of all AC events. We need to select the ones we are interested in. So, for this example, I am interested in seeing all of the files that users have been trying to execute that have subsequently been denied. So I'll select event 9000 to provide this data. You will notice that some events are selected by default and some are not. The ones that are not generally generate a very large number of events. For example, 9001 allows execution. We recommend only selecting these events if they are of particular interest to you and then once troubleshooting is complete, switch them back off again. Back in the navigation panel, select the Events Filtering node. Select to enable event filtering. Here you can see a list of all types of files that can be included or excluded in the data capture. If you hover over an event ID, the event description displays. You'll notice some of the events have no default filtering applied. As mentioned before, this is because they are likely to generate a very large amount of events. For example, the allowed execution 9001 event is excluded from filtering. In this example, I am only interested in seeing which .exe files have been denied. So on the 9000 column, I'll clear asterisk.asterisk and select asterisk.exe. Save to commit all the changes to the configuration. Scheduling daily maintenance. You may recall earlier I said if central login had been selected, we recommend scheduling daily maintenance as a preventative measure to the database getting overloaded. We'll take a look at this now. In the Security Controls console, from the Manage menu, select Database Maintenance. Go to the AC Events tab and select Enable Daily Maintenance of AC Events. Once enabled, you can select the time you want the job to run and whether to delete based on event number or number of days. From within this dialog, you also have the option to run an ad hoc job immediately by hitting Run Now. To commit the schedule, select Save Scheduled Changes. A quick recap on what we've done so far. We've enabled event capturing, selected which events will be captured, filtered on which file types will capture, and set up a scheduled maintenance job to keep the database within manageable limits. So now we can move on to see how we retrieve the events that have been captured on the managed endpoints and sent back to the database. You can view events in one of two ways. Select View Events from the View menu, then select Application Control Events, or if you're in the AC Configuration Editor, you can select the View Events option at the bottom. Just to note here, the Application Control Events window opens independently to the console window, so you can move between the two. This will come into play later when we are looking at creating items from captured events. There's a lot going on in this Events window, so we'll look at it a section at a time. This is where you select the type of query you want to run. Predefined event views can be selected from the drop-down. I'm interested in seeing what executables have been denied. You can see the event types that will be included in the query here. You can create custom views. 
To do this, you need to set the criteria and run the query first, then select Save As. The custom queries will display in the drop-down once created, and you can rename or delete them from the Manage option. Next, you pick a time range for the query. The drop-down has predefined periods, but you can create a custom time range, but only one custom range can be saved and edited. Let's take a quick look at that. To specify a custom period, maybe you updated your configuration on a certain date to block a new app and you want to see the denied execution request since that new configuration was deployed. So let's pick a start date of the 20th of January, leave the end date and select OK. That time range can now be seen in the drop down list. To edit the custom period, simply hit change and go ahead and update the times. For this example, we'll pick the custom period. The query can be limited to user and machine as well. Once you're happy with the criteria, hit Run Query. The bottom half of the window is populated. We'll move on to that section next. The query results are in the bottom half of the window. From here, you can do a number of things to customise the view. Firstly, you can search for specific text. Let's say we're interested in seeing data for the Procmon XE only. Type in Procmon. The results are filtered out to only show those that include Procmon in the description. Further tips on using the search tool can be found in the main security controls help. Hit clear to return to the full results view. Another way to tailor the results is to select show filter editor. Here you can specify criteria to further filter the results. It's easier to show you this than try and explain. Choose the element, we'll keep path. The parameter, contains, and value, procmum. Hit apply, OK. Any filters created display at the bottom of the results and can be cleared or deleted. Once you are happy with the filtered results, you can further tailor the view by use of the context menu. Right click on any column header to see the list of actions. You can also select choose columns to pick which columns are included in the display. And drag and drop columns to reorder them. Finally in this section, you have the option to export the results in CSV format. Remember earlier in this video, I mentioned that the events window is independent to the security controls console. Now we'll take a look at why that is useful. You can drag and drop or copy and paste any of the events from the query results over to the AC configuration to create a rule item. This can be done for allowed and denied executable controls and for privilege management application and self elevation items. It can also be applied to executable control and privilege management rule collections. Let's take a quick look using our Procmon example. We want to create a rule to allow all users to execute Procmon. In the AC configuration editor, navigate to where we create rule items down in rule sets. And we want to apply the rule to everyone. So expand the everyone group, highlight executable control. That puts us in the right place in the configuration editor to create the rule item using the event ID. Now back in the AC event window, Using our previously set up filter, select Procmon. Making sure you have a view of both consoles, click and drag the Procmon event over to the AC config, which we have just previously opened. You are asked which type of rule item you want to create. Select file name. And there we can see the rule item has been added to the allowed items list. Let's take a look at the rule. Double click or right click and edit rule. You must make sure you select allow file to run if it is not owned by a trusted owner. Otherwise the file will be blocked before getting to this rule level within the config due to the rule processing order of application control. Now click the metadata tab and select product name and vendor. This adds a further level of protection so that if a malicious app is created, it will not match the records and therefore be blocked. I hope you have found this video useful. For more details on this and other features within the Security Controls product, 
please see the help available on help.avanti.com.